Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's already our second Sunday in Advent, the time given to us by our church for us to get prepared as Christ who came, who comes every day in our lives and will be coming again one day for his glory, I mean, the glory of our Lord. And this is the preparation we're going to do all this time. Last Sunday, Father Berry reminded us what this Advent time is for. And in different words, he discussed how the Lord came and how the Lord will come again. So it's not like the Lord never came before and that he's only coming at the end of this month, the end of December or 24th or 25th. No. The church just gives us this opportunity to reflect. I like saying meditate. Reflection is more like in our brain, human intelligence, but having this meditation on these different comings of our Lord. That way we can focus on our lives and know what we can change for us to be able to receive in a day, on a daily basis the Lord coming for us to be ready to receive the Lord who will become coming on the last day. Now, as for every Sunday, we have two readings. The epistle to Romans shows how God will continue to be faithful to his promises. He did promise. He has been faithful. He is always faithful and he will continue being faithful to his promises. That's the reason why we can be full of hope in our heart. Full of joy, courage, and peace, knowing that the Lord will come again, even if his coming will be preceded by events such as described in the gospel. Deacon Dan just read for us a very scary gospel, to be honest. This pericope from St. Luke is, as you notice, addressing what has to happen before this eschatology coming of the Lord, meaning the second coming of Jesus, the coming within the context of fullness of God's kingdom, starting from here on this earth. Now, after reading this gospel, I said just what Deacon Dan was reading, to be honest, many of us, including myself, maybe even, it may be worse in my heart, I don't know if you are able to say that this is really the, the kind of readings that you like from the Bible. If someone asks you what is your favorite uh, paragraph or verses in the Bible, I'm not sure many of us will tell me, okay, the gospel from today is your best. Maybe, okay, but personally, it's not the kind of readings that make me feel comfortable. No. In this gospel, the Lord is talking about war, about how things will be destroyed while we human beings today, we wish to experience peace and tranquility 
We need to experience this happiness that we have been waiting from our Lord. And the Lord is talking about how things will be before his coming again. Today, sisters and brothers in Christ, in these troubled times, when we are wondering what is going to happen to us, Jesus invites us to listen to him because war is not the will of God, but rather the consequence of men, I can say even women, who turn away from the Lord and his gospel. God loves us, and we know it. Even kids, we say that, they will sing. In his law, he gives us freedom anyway. We are product of God's freedom through his law. We have, we are, we are made through the freedom of God himself. So he wants us to be free from what we do doing. We are free to make choices and decisions. In Genesis 3.17, we are told that you may choose yourself, for it's given to you. Meaning, we are all able to make our choices. Unfortunately, our choices may be not only good, but sometimes we choose evil. Unfortunately, due to our human arrogance, greed, and selfishness, many, many of us choose to hurt others. That's why we can notice that war is almost inevitable in this world and that the Lord is not afraid to tell us about war. You may not really know much about war, maybe through media, I know. But we come from countries where things are not always easy when it comes to, to war, that you're gonna be, you're gonna see two parts of countries killing at each other. Uh, you will see people you knew that they, they died all because of what's going on in the country. But you don't have to come from Congo or Nigeria to know that war may come from yourself. Ourselves, we may be fighting against ourselves. It may be in your family, some little world you are experiencing. At work, in our communities, we have wars. I was talking to my to a friend who told me that war. He was unable to describe or give definition of war. To him, war is something like, he said, I just can't give an explanation. War is something when two parts, powerful parts, are unable to have agreement, unable to have conversation with law, unable to have constructive communication, they will send innocent people to fight each other and killing innocent and themselves are protected. That's where we can talk about war. But again, war can start in here. Myself fighting about different decisions I would like to make. I would like to do this or no, I'm not doing, I'm changing. Fighting in here. The good thing is that with the Lord, The Lord invites us to accept, I mean, to act accordingly. But above all, he invites you, he invites me, he invites us to question ourselves and not to lose faith. He doesn't want us to lose faith. Let us just question ourselves about what we are doing for us to really build this world and then be ready to receive his son's coming again. He even tells us that before his return, nature itself will be disturbed. And today we witness earthquakes, storms, floods, 
landslides and everything we experience almost on a daily basis. And sometimes, because some of us have to make money, they have to create fear among us by using different media and delivering sensational news with exaggeration just to create fear and make money. And fundamentalists, those people with, excuse me, with kind of primary and simplistic interpretation of this kind of reading today, they, took, they take advantage to play the prophet of doom, the agents of fear. But God is not the police to arrest us and put us in jail. No. He wants us, like I said, free. But he's expecting us to repent, to change our life. And let us not forget that in Matthew 24, 35, 34 to 35, yeah, or if 35 to 37, we are told that no one knows when the Lord will return. We don't know when he's coming back. So all these scary events reported in this gospel today mean that the Son of Man, the Son of God, we come back, nobody knows when. Consequently, we need to get ready every day. That's why this time is given to us, to remind us, to keep us awake, for not us to start sleeping. In addition, the Lord wants to remind us that no one is safe from a catastrophe, from a, a kind of human or nat natural disaster. We're not protected from that. So again, we need to be ready on a daily basis. And the Lord, therefore, calls us to face this scary event of this world in order to meditate on our final end. Now it may be kind of, we call it in French, redundance, kind of repetition talking about final ends, which means we have different kind of ends. We started by being created by God, our birth, day, and then we knew different changes. If you go in the Gospel of John, the first verse is, uh, in the beginning the world was so, so, so. And then the original scripture from, from uh, Greg, the old Greg will say, N-O-R-K, which means in one of the beginnings, we human beings have different beginnings, just I started saying. I believe that when you left your home this morning, you were Michelle, Tracy. You were, of course, you. But coming in this home of God, you will have communion. Being in communion with God and receiving His words. When you can go back home, you should not be the same person. You should be a different Sally. You should be a different John when you go back home. Which means you have a new beginning, different from what you were this morning before you came. That's what we're talking about. Final end. Different kind of ends. Also, the Lord wants us to question ourselves on what is our purpose of our life. What is the purpose of our lives? Is it material success or salvation of our souls? Just a simple question. The terrible event of this world, as described 
in the gospel today should not devastate us, no. On the contrary, they should make, help us repent and return to God in prayer, faith, love, and hope. That way we will be ready and be on God. Be vigilant again. Being on God means watching, paying attention, and above all, meditating and praying before making any kind of decision of life. But why do we have to pray and meditate? Because without prayer, we can make human decisions, but not always decisions according to God's hands, according to God's word, which will never pass. God's word will remain. A Christian is not someone who blindly follow the thought and the fashions of the world or the fashion of this present time, no. A Christian is the one who places this world with all that it contains in front of God. Of course, starting by ourselves, because usually it's easy to say, okay, the world, people are doing this, and yourself and myself, let us put ourselves, including the world, in the front of God. We don't have necessarily to follow the way this world is going. And this can be possible only through prayer, through reading God's word, which again will never pass and I will remain. So sisters and brothers in Christ, are we prayerful people? Are we a prayerful congregation? Are we true Christians who dare to place our lives, our thoughts, our convictions, our opinions, our feelings under the gaze of God? That may be the question for this day. Because I know without prayer, we cannot be truly vigilant. We cannot be in a good position to wait this king who is coming again. Amen.